Hi everyone, we're group eight and we're presenting to you Miyagi. Um, so we're gonna go over four, op or four aspects of our project. Um, I'll start with the project goal. Um, so here it is. Um, so our main goal is um, to address the problem of paper-based diagnostic devices. Um, the benefits are they're inexpensive, they're portable, disposable, and they provide you with rapid results. Um, the current standard for making these um, diagnostic devices is the Xerox Color Cube Wax Printer. The problem is it's no longer manufactured, uh, which means now to obtain one, it's about $1,000, with, with each cartridge being around $30. Um, wax printing is a common method for this because um, you can print the design onto the paper um, and then it requires a heating and permeation step. Um, and after that, you're able to put your samples on the paper. Um, so our goal is to develop a low cost open source wax printer um, that is optimized specifically for printing these paper-based diagnostic devices. Um, and our end user is going to be research and educational laboratories. Um, going forward, our project specifications were one, to make it open source, um, two, um, optimize for printing these paper-based diagnostic devices. We wanted to eliminate the separate baking step to make it one step. Um, we wanted to obtain one millimeter channel resolution, which is the industry standard, and high reproducibility. Next, I'll talk a little bit about the, the design process. Miyagi's design breaks it into three separate components. These are the heating, the extrusion, and the XY motion. The heating is controlled by the 3D printer itself and uses a heating pad to heat up a metal syringe holder that holds the plastic disposable syringe inside of it. This works to heat up the wax to a set temperature. The extrusion is a pressure-based extrusion system that uses a series of pressure regulators to, to finally control the pressure. And then the XY motion is provided by the 3D printer itself and it's just adapted from Yagi. Together, these three components come together to make a working printer. Um, in order to convert a 3D model to be wax printed, we created our own custom uh, munging script that extracts the first layer of the G-code and then changes the commands around so that it can uh, be compatible with our printer. Here on the left, you can see the original Prusa printer that we took. And then on the right, you can see the first version of our Miyagi printer. Currently, we are on version two, but due to unforeseen circumstances, we were unable to get a picture of it. I'll, not, I'll, I'll now talk a little bit about the results of our device. So after, after the fall, we were able to achieve printing of functional wax paper devices. This is an example of our dual channel flow assay that we accomplished last semester. After working, after our progress in the fall, we decided that we wanted to achieve higher resolution and lower print variability. So to do this, we decided on some next steps, which include looking at waxes with more uniform chemical composition, as well as trying smaller gauge and shorter syringe tips for our device, um, all to try to achieve this better resolution. One of the waxes that we were able to try during this semester was lauric acid. Lauric acid has a more uniform chemical composition than the paraffin wax that we were previously using. The melting point has a melting range between 44 and 46 degrees versus paraffin wax, which has a melting point between 53 and 58 degrees. So we were hoping that the smaller range would allow us to tune the temperature that we melted the wax to print um, more precisely and allow us to achieve better resolution. And though we were able to characterize our results from this, the lauric acid did show promising results towards achieving better print resolution. We also were able to try smaller gauge and shorter syringe tips. Both of these also led to a promising direction for achieving better print resolution. We went from using one inch syringe tips to half inch syringe tips. 
And the new syringe holder that we received from the machine shop this semester allowed us to increase the gauge size and which increasing the gauge size, gauge size decreases the actual size of the tip, which allowed us to print finer lines. So this image is the only image that we actually have of the work we did this semester. But you can see here that the print variability is pretty low and the lines were much finer than we achieved in the past. So to do a little cost analysis between the industry standard and our Miyagi kit, we have the Xerox printer, which costs about $1,000 purchasing it secondhand. And the wax cartridges are $30 a cartridge. And compared to our Miyagi kit, which is about $340 in addition to the $749 of the Prusa, the cost of um, the two devices are pretty similar. However, you'll notice that the wax that we use to print Miyagi isn't in a proprietary cartridge. So you can buy the wax in bulk, which averages out to about $2 an ounce, which is much lower than buying a cartridge. Uh, great, and I will talk about uh, the future directions for the rest of the semester. So what we would have done uh, had we you know, still been on campus and able to work on this project was number one, we would have continued with our characterization and analysis of the different waxes that we had. Uh, in addition to the paraffin wax that we were using in the fall, we had recently just gotten the lauric acid and the tetradecanoic acid, uh, which are more highly engineered and have a, a smaller range within their uh, melting temperature. So that was a very promising lead for a way to increase our resolution. Uh, another thing that we would have continued to look at is the range of temperatures above the melting point at which the printer runs at, because we saw that as uh, we increased the temperature farther and farther past the melting point, the viscosity increased, which often led to thicker printed lines. So the closer the wax temperature was to its melting point, the thinner the line was. So we want to characterize and look at what temperatures really optimized the printing uh, of these devices. And another thing that we wanted to do was change the uh, print path of the printer to a laser cutter style where uh, the extrusion can be turned on and off without the print head needing to stop moving, which currently it cannot do. Um, next slide. And what can we actually do remotely? We're not exactly sure. Uh, we're at a point in the project where pretty much the only work that's left to do is physically testing with our device, which is locked in the BE lab. So <laughs> I'd like to say a big thank you to uh, Dr. Chow and Mike Magarachi and everybody at the Stevenson Foundation Bioengineering Laboratory and Biomaker Space. <laughs>